Can you hear me now? Rawr. Uh, Eddie, can you tweet out and let, or let the other guys know to come back over here, or did it just come back up? Rawr? Rawr. Can you hear me now? Ouch. Can you hear now? Good. That was oddly weird that the phone just overheated like that. Never had that happen before. First time's a charm, right? Um, I can't see the text on the iPad to reply to them. It doesn't have the best camera. Hey, there we go. Thank you, sir. Um, so we're, we're over on the iPad now. The iPhone is in the refrigerator. Uh, we'll see how long, see if that helps and how long that lasts. So we were on to the wiring at this point. That is going to be our Y. Why? Because we like you. M-O-U-S-E. Oh. So let's connect these guys up over here. So that's going to go there. You guys can't see this. That guy is going to go there. We'll see what the how that works with the bed. I think that needs to be outside of the bed. Wow, it is um, actually pretty warm here today, so. That did not surprise me. Okay, we're really going to plug the Z in. This is our X. Just going to go over here. Assuming that this unlabeled one is going to be the end stop over here. Ironically, this part of the cable management could have been a little bit better compared to the Ender 3. Um, we have our Z here, which is, I'm gonna have to turn that over. There we go. Sorry, you guys can't see this because I have to do it from down below. Last but not least, or at least not last, uh, or second to last, I don't know, is going to be our hot end. Um, Eddie, I know you were concerned about this connector, but yeah, I'm just confirming this is a standard mini fit. It's the this connector here. Uh, it's the same connector that's used on like a PCIe card um, to, for your power inside of a computer. And it's actually comes off of a little dongle here in the back that you guys can't see, but it's that connector ever failed. It's all you have to do is cut the connector off and, and hardwire the wires together or something else. Um, yeah, Tom, dude, that's that's crazy. That is crazy. Okay, so our only thing left here is our power, and then I can give you guys. We'll look around. That is everybody. Yep. All right, that's everyone connected. So, let's do this. I'm going to set this here, or here. You're not gonna like the view for a second. And I'm gonna do, before we power it up, I'm going to bring this out here. And we're going to do a, an Ender 3 fight. So 
So let's see, we're gonna flip the cameras here and I'm gonna step back for a second. So we have the Gitek on the left and the Ender 3 on the right. Uh, so you can see that the LCDs are different and it's maybe five, 10 centimeters um, taller, slightly bigger. Yeah, so the left one is the Gitek. So let me slide this out of the way and let me point out the core differences while I have the camera on this view. Forgive the, the shaky cam. So we have the 20 by 40 LCD rather than the graphic LCD, again, which I prefer. Um, it has a the single ribbon cable, but this is shielded um, and it probably wants to tuck away. You have an SD card slot on the side here, so it's easy to access versus the micro SD here. Um, you do have the front USB still. It is a full size USB, not a micro USB. The hot end is very similar uh, structurally. It's actually a little bit larger, but inside is an E3D style hot end. I don't wanna necessarily call it a clone um, without pulling it out and looking at it completely, but it's an E3D style. The, the fan on, the parts cooling fan is very similar to the Ender 3, and the Ender 3 has a front fan here. Instead, this uses a side fan uh, which probably the first print will be a fan shield for that. Um, this is almost identical to the A30 board. The difference on the A30, the A30 is actually larger and it has a little PC board here. So instead of these wires going hardwired like this since it's short, um, it has a little PC board with a connector. And that's actually what broke on the A30, which I've been waiting for parts on. Structurally, these are pretty much the same. Uh, I'll put that piece back in later. This side, instead of having the hard plastic cap, it just has a couple of standoffs in the cover. Um, two separate wires, but all in all, it's about the same. The extruder can go from side to side. Oh, and if I didn't mention, that's a standard groove mount. There's an aluminum piece underneath. That's a standard groove mount, so any other E3D style hot end could be effectively just dropped right in to replace that if you chose to. Uh, spool holder protrudes from the side to create a little bit more arc. Let's go up there. It has their GT, it's all V-slot, yes. Um, and it has their unlocked board as opposed to the, the locked Melzi board in here. This has an unlocked um, board in it so you can load any version of ramps that you want and it's a full mega 2560 ramps clone um, power supplies and everything else are about the same it uses the same XT style connector it has a strain relief here um, same mounting style it is all metal it's not acrylic it's all metal the only ac acrylic is that front cover piece right there um, this is what I was mentioning earlier. So there's a little bit, their extruder is slightly different. It has a little bit of a, a thumb catch there to make it a little bit easier to push. And it also takes Bowden tubes. So should you use a um, different style filament? Um, and yes, it, it is open source. Um, so they say, I haven't gone looking for the firmware yet, but I know with other Gitech products they've they've gone open. Um, oh, this was one of the other ones here. Um, the A30 has this also at the top of the lead screw. And actually, let me flip this around to show you. Sorry for the jumping camera. So that's the lead screw, nothing there on top of the Ender 3. On this guy, it has the cup plate with the bearing inside there. It looks like there's two screws so that you can actually adjust that. Um, but that should help prevent some Z-wobble. Standard coupler and everything else is very similar. Again, height-wise, I mean, it's, it's, it's a couple of centimeters taller. It's probably, I don't know, at least 20 millimeters taller um, looking at the height.
there. So let's turn it around. Let's see if I can get this guy back on camera. And let's see if I can get that to not fall over. Uh, sorry, I'm using the iPad now, so it's not as easy to try to control it or the angle. Um, I'm gonna pull the power cord over. We're gonna turn it on, see if we have motion, and we'll call it quits there. Oh, actually, one other thing to point out, this bracket right here, um, as opposed to the Ender 3, the Ender 3 only goes to about where the wheels are at. This bracket goes out all the way to here, behind the 20, 20. Uh, this bracket goes out all the way to here to keep this bar rigid. Since there's only one motor, it makes sure that this bar is rigid, going across there. So, a few minor, I think, improvements over the Ender. Performance-wise, you know, we don't know yet. Uh, hang on, let me grab my phone out of the fridge. I don't want it to freeze. It is nice and frosty now. And so we are powered on. Hey, thank you, sir, very much. I appreciate that. And let's see if I can get that view. I'm trying to get you a view of the. There we go. I don't think I'm going to be able to get that in there. So we're just going to have to go with. Let me try to get you a view like this. Sorry guys, I know it's wobbling all over. So we have our typical Marlin screen, prepare, control, no SD card. So I'm just gonna go to control, I'm gonna go to motion. Oops, that's not what I want. Main, prepare, there we go. There's auto home, set home offsets, so we have the pretty much the full Marlin feature set here, um, not just stripped down version. We'll go to move access. You can do move 10 millimeters. Start off with our X. And it moves. Of course, it hasn't been home, so it doesn't know where it's at. We'll move our Y. It goes front. It goes back. And I think that's it for now, until I get a chance to uh, try to calibrate it without holding the phone. Um, I think that's all we're going to get for now. So I will try to do more with it this weekend after dinner and get some prints going, and I'll, I'll post those over on Twitter. Um, oops. Let me try to get you guys the rotated view there so again so you can see it. See if we can get that. So there it is. And there is the Ender 3. So very, very similar. Um, I will let you guys know what I think about it. Uh, I want to thank Geetech for sending this to me to have an opportunity to play with. And um, you know, to get my opinion and feedback out there. Um, so with that, I will end the part about for this guy. Would uh, anyone like a quick tour of the mess that is currently the house? Um, I can do that for you. If not, you're feel free to 
check out now, but let me get you a tour de mess here. So this is uh, the back patio here. Um, it's just an enclosed area, bear with the sun. And basically everything's back here. They shove the, the stove, the fridge, the more important fridge, uh, and of course the coffee maker there. Um, this is our kitchen island, which got moved back here, so I'm stealing this countertop space for now just to be able to use this. And we'll go into the house. And um, I'll try to get you. And this was our kitchen area. That's the sink. All of the cabinetry at the bottom got destroyed. Uh, this is where the refrigerator and the pantry originally were. And then um, this is the wall where the island went. They've been working on the drywall this week, so this all got replaced um, during this week and they've started patching it up. All the way through the living area, of course they left the TV up and the speakers just hanging out of the walls there. Um, all the way to the front door. The, um, I got power back to this today because I needed my network capabilities, but there's the, the rack that powers the, the house. Most of it is all shut down at the moment. Um, one of the bedrooms, they started taping up the drywall in here just a bit and started getting this one back together. This is the bathroom where the flood was at. It all started right there from that portion of the sink and it basically got all the floor, all the wainscot on the walls here had to come out. It got all the way back into the laundry back there. All the walls in this room and the closets that they haven't finished the drywall on yet. There's a sink all the way into the master bedroom and the master bathroom and all of this tile uh, is gonna have to get ripped out as well because they couldn't get this sink out without damaging the rest of the tile. And this has to be replaced because it was damaged from the water as well. But So that is our tiny little house. And that basically wraps it up. Uh, thanks everyone for watching and jumping in. Um, thank you to uh, Geetech for sending the A10. Um, everyone, please watch. You will see prints start coming off this thing very soon. And um, it's, it's going to be fun to put the fan in the background. I love the way that thing spins. Um, it's going to be fun to pit this side by side against the Ender 3 and see how the two do against each other as far as quality of prints and everything. Uh, one thing I'm noticing, because structurally it's very similar, I think a lot of the accessories that uh, people have already designed at Disco Head, there we go. Um, I think a lot of the accessories that people have already designed for this, including like the, the filament arms, you know, for keeping that rotation and the, the clip-on filament mounts and stuff, I think a lot of that's going to uh, just instantly work on this guy. So... Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but anyone, thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll, um, get down here and sign off and we will see you all next time. Aloha.